The classic Silicon Valley tale. Two engineering college dropouts with a dream create a miracle piece of software and make it big. Today, I'm gonna to talk with Bob, half of the brains behind Embedder, who make a hardware-aware coding agent that means you might not ever have to write hardware drivers ever again. They claim any microcontroller and any peripheral will work with their tool so long as you have the data sheet. I, like every other engineer, have my suspicions about a free lunch, but after receiving funding from Y Combinator, it's clear this duo is not messing around. I will wait right here whilst you like and subscribe, and after that, we'll go talk to Bob from Embedder. Okay, let's go. All right, Bob, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for popping on through. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here, Elliot. All right, first question, I'm gonna come in thick and fast and I usher you not to say the wrong answer. Do you think that AI programming our hardware or the drivers controlling the hardware could be the end of humanity? Like, are we gonna have AI creating backdoors in that eventually will flip a switch in 2030 and our whole world will end? Is, is that what you're doing? No, no, no definitely not. Hopefully, hopefully the AI is acting in our best interest, I guess, and don't create backdoors, but there could be a possibility <laughs> where you say we have AI in humanoids and the humanoids program, you know, their own humanoids and they just keep getting exponentially better and uh, grab the Terminator <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> okay, well, so we don't give people the wrong idea 40 seconds into this video. What is it that you do exactly at Embedder? Yeah, so Embedder is building the world's first hardware-aware coding agent. And mm. uh, we found that traditional coding tools like Cursor or Cloud Code really struggle in embedded environments because of two problems. One is that it doesn't have the context, right? Uh, it, it, imagine I want to write an I2C driver for IMU. I need to know what registers I need to pull data out of, like what registers I need to also initialize or what value they need to initialize to. And a traditional coding agent doesn't have access to that documentation, right? And it would just no. hallucinate it and give you the wrong value and produce. Well, it would never know value. what's attached to what, what yeah, the yeah. sort of communication protocol you, looks like, know. how to make a packet. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's the first problem, right? It's the information problem. The second problem is that once you finish that coding task, a traditional coding agent doesn't have a, a way to interact with your hardware. It can't actually build it. It can't flash it and it can't test it, right? You, you, you either test it through serial or you test it through like a GDB debugger. And what our tool does is solves basically both of those issues. We create mm -hmm. an information, informational layer. We have a web console that, has, that allows you to upload all your, all your documentation for the project. Then once the agent completes a coding task, it will actually automatically verify it. So it will build, uh, it will build flash. Then it will either use serial or a GDB server to verify the code it written on your, on your MCU or like something else actually works. This, that's such a wild workflow and something that engineers have really never had up until you know 2025. <laughs> so your first problem, the information problem, what what do I need to exactly provide to your, your your system so I can get up and running? So is it, you know, say we talked about the IMU with the I2C driver. So I need to get the IMU's data sheet, chuck that over to you. What else do you need? I mean, I could be, you know, using an NRF 54 or I could be using any other microcontroller how do you how do you do that? Do I also need to give you that file as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we have a config file in our coding agent. So on locally, there's an embedder MD file that's allowed allow you to specify what microcontroller you're using. Am I using an RTOS mm -hmm. or am I bare metal right now? Right, and that allows you to uh, specify what microcontroller you're using. And uh, what what, what would be optimal is that if you upload the like the hell documentation for that microcontroller, like the one thousand yeah. page. You know, yeah, that, yeah. That I don't want to read that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't want to. No, nobody wants to read that thing, right? And you just <laughs> upload that to the uh, into the same project, and our coding coding agent will also have like you know uh, c the correct understanding of the hell, uh, the hell layer and can actually you know uh, write the right functions to interact with your hardware. I want to talk about the other problem as well. So we say the first one was the information problem. The other one was sort of the automated debugging problem. Now I'm gonna put my hand up and say, and I'm sure other engineers watching this will also say, "May I struggle to get the debug environment working myself, right? From the beginning, your, your, your system where sort of the, you know, it'll, it'll write a driver, for instance, your AR2 will write a driver for me and then it will test it. And then it will read the, the output, right, correct. Uh, and then it will use that to refactor and go again until it works. That's that's sort of how that part works, correct? That's correct. So wow, how, how do you get about 
making sure that every microcontroller is able to use that feature because you know everything has a different sort of debug or tool chain mm -hmm. that you might need to use to get up and running. How do you do it? Yeah, this is actually a good question. So for Serial, it's pretty easy, right? Serial always has a port, always uh, has a bold, right? So just input mm -hmm. that into our config file and you can access the Serial terminal. And if you have like an interactive Serial terminal, if it's just like can be launched by a command, these things are all things that can be specified in the config file. So for the, for example, if we have an interactive uh, terminal that has to be launched inside like a Python virtual environment, you would uh, you would just put, a, you would config the command to what you normally do, right? Launch the Python environment, then do the add symbols and then uh, launch your interactive serial. So that's how you get the serial started. And the same as the build and the flash command, all of those are just configured in our config file. What you normally mm -hmm. do as a developer that our AI agent will just uh, do as well. So it basically, it's uh, copying the human's uh, behavior in the debug loop and do exactly what you would normally do. <laughs> okay, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, another question that I have is sort of the compatibility of this tool. So, um, you know, we're young engineers. There are microcontrollers that are older than us. <laughs> yeah, how how yeah. backwards compatible is this to, you know, like the old like PIC 16s and, and old AVR? Like, can I use this tool with anything I throw at it? Yeah, definitely. If you have the documentation for it, you can uh, use it. And we had customers already using on like 30 year old TI microcontrollers and it's been working for them. So yeah, definitely yeah. want to see what like ancient hardware people can find and uh, try to use it on our platform. Maybe almost challenge it as, as, a, as a competition. See if you can see if you can't get a good result out of this thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Now we talked about companies as well. Who's using this at the moment? Because I feel like that will definitely help people to realize that this isn't just this isn't just like a wrapper crappy project. Like this is a real goddamn change to the electrical engineer's life that you've got here. Who's using this tool at the moment and what do they think about it? Yeah, we have over 20 different companies using it already. We launched just last week and people are being, building really cool stuff with it. We have Stardust building like bare metal flight controllers, uh, fixed wing mm -hmm. UAVs, blimps, uh, IoT cameras. And even uh, we partner with uh, the team at Pebble uh, to build the new uh, Pebble Core 2 uh, Duo smartwatch. So, and- Oh, yes, yes, yes. I saw, yeah, I saw that example and, on, on your YouTube channel where you had the, you had the compass and you were able to move it around. That was fantastic. That's a video that we should all watch. Yeah. yeah it's, it's been great working with them and helping them, you know, get the watches out to the customers faster. And, uh, the feedback we've been getting is that a lot of our customers were on Clock before and it's, it's a seamless switch. So you literally download this new package and it straight up just performs better than Clock code. So it does everything that Clock code was able to do, but just better for the embedded, uh, uh, embedded workflow. So you got some pretty big names in there, right? Fantastic job on Embedder. What I'd like to ask is for you to sort of tell the people at home who are watching is how they can get started with your tool, you know, how they can begin, read some documentation, maybe even try it out for themselves. Uh, yeah, uh, and, for, and for the rest of this month, we're giving all users free $50 credits when they sign up. So you get $50 of free usage when you sign up for Embedder and we'd love to hear what you think and yeah. Amazing. Perfect. Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. By the way, IPXs, if you've used this tool before, let us know how it was down in the comments. Make sure you like if you liked the interview. Subscribe if you like the content. But most importantly, stay disruptive. <laughs>